Hi, this is Dr. Richard Ruling, here to share with you on the Total Health Channel again. Just uh, as I was eating my lunch, watched a video by Doug Batchelor. Uh, he was a favorite preacher of my mother, and I want to honor her and, and uh, him also. I like his preaching, um, but uh, I, I feel like he has missed something in these uh, seven seals, really. Uh, focus uh, of his message today on the Sabbath school lesson for tomorrow is uh, the Sabbath as the seal of God. And yes, that's, uh, uh, we've had that impression. We was taught that from childhood 70-some uh, years ago. But um, Ellen White says in every age there's a new development of truth, the message of God to the people of that generation. Old truth is all essential. New truth is not independent of the old, but an unfolding of it. And whoever rejects or neglects the new does not really possess the old. So hang on and stay with me for why there's more than one seal. I actually, uh, the Bible says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit whereby ye are sealed, in Ephesians 4.30. But uh, if we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, there are seven spirits before the throne. And there are seven seals. Could that be just a coincidence? Uh, I think not. And I think that if you uh, consider what we're sharing here, Doug Batchelor points out that the uh, Sabbath is textually like a seal in the sense that it, it had God's name, his uh, office as creator of heaven and earth, heaven and earth or his dominion. Uh, any any uh, executive like uh, Donald Trump, has, has, his seal has his name and president, that's his office, of the United States of America. So th that fits pretty well to say that God is uh, uh, creator of heaven and earth and uh, has dominion over uh, everything there. But the fact is, if you look at it closely, uh, it has LORD in all caps three times where translators remove God's name. And they supplanted it with the, the title LORD. Ellen White says in Great Controversy, the Pope styles himself by the title LORD GOD THE POPE. So those are titles, not names. And without a name, we have an empty seal. So uh, the fact is, uh, Solomon said, God had a great name, and he built his temple uh, to honor it, that all people might know thy name. That was in his prayer of dedication for the temple in, uh, I believe it was 1 Kings 8th chapter. Okay, around the 40th verse, something like that. So uh, please consider the fact that God has a great name. He felt bad in Ezekiel 36, verse 19 and 20, where his people, when he scattered among, among the heathen, they profaned his name. And uh, in the end time, he's going to, uh, he says he will sanctify his great name. Christ's words in Matthew 17, verse 11, is that Elijah is supposed to come and restore all things. I believe we can be Elijah's, Elijah's helpers. I believe there will be 144,000 Elijah's, okay, uh, in their local areas, uh, living for truth. Maybe after communication falls down and the Internet is no longer working, they, we might be the only light that some people hear in their community. If we're anointed by God with power, we might have the impact that Christ had in his time. Uh, that's huge to say, uh, but it's not by might nor power, but by his spirit. And we, and we can do that, basically. So uh, name is important. It's the first seal. The, uh, and it's clued, actually, by uh, the Revelation 6, 1, when John heard thunder uh, and he saw a white horse, a message of truth, the white horse represents a truth for the end time, but the thunder is a link to God's name. In John 12, verse 28 and 29, Christ says, Father, glorify your name, and the people heard thunder. Okay. And again, in Revelation 14, 1, 144,000 have the Father's name written in their forehead, and in the next verse is thunder, thunderings and lightnings. So, uh, name is important. And the second seal then, moving on, I'm just going to give you the idea that there are seven seals. We'll give a few points about each one as a summary of what we've spent this last week looking at. The covenant, okay, because in the second seal, there's a great sword and peace is taken from the earth. Well, when God made a covenant in Exodus 34, 10 and 11, he says, behold, I'm making a covenant. It's a terrible thing I'm going to do with you. I'm going to drive out the Canaanite, okay. So that take, took peace from the earth at that time. But in the end time, we want God as our defender. Now, Israel was afraid initially to go to the promised land because of giants. But they went there without loss. When jo Joshua and they went around Jericho, walls fell down. 
And I believe uh, that's a type of the end time Babylon that is going to fall and that we can be there and do that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if you've got good help with God, uh, you know, my mother taught me when I was little, uh, uh, one person can do any, uh, two people can do anything if one of them is God. <laughs> so God is looking for help right now and uh, we are his hands, his feet. Let's uh, think about the covenant for a moment. Ellen White's last definition in her last book, Prophets and Kings, you know it by, at page 7, 13, and 14, it says what God purposed to do for the world through Israel, the chosen nation, he will finally accomplish through his church on earth today, even his covenant-keeping people. And to them will be fulfilled all the covenant promises made by Jehovah to that ancient people. That is huge. We'll talk about it a little later. But uh, the point is the church is not what we think of as uh, the building we attend on sa Saturday or Sabbath. It's not about the general conference. The church is to be, you know, in end time, it will be a covenant-keeping people. The none of the rest will matter, okay? I know that may hurt the pride of some people in big office, but uh, stay with it. It, 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 will, it will turn out that way. Um, we're living in a time, I just might say that uh, I like David Gates, and he quotes an unrecorded vision of Ellen White. Uh, you might Google it uh, or on YouTube to see it where Ellen White saw a sudden storm of, of uh, persecution, terrible, uh, just blew down everything, uh, and not an Adventist was to be seen, and the leaders were never seen again, okay? Huge, uh, awesome thought, but it fits with Daniel 12, verse 7, when, it's, uh, when it says that he will scatter the power of the holy people. That is an echo of Christ last night, and he said... Uh, all you will be offended by, of me this night, for it is written, Smite the shepherd, the sheep will be scattered. Christ was smitten as the shepherd, and his disciples were scattered. That last night was a microcosm of end time events, and for Daniel 12:7 to say that the holy people will be scattered, uh, I think bad news for leaders if they aren't uh, into end time truth and some of the things we're considering. We need to be protected by God's truths, and... Uh, those that uh, had sought office were never seen again. Uh, they lead, the Adventists slowly arose and chose leaders who had never uh, sought offices before. Well, I, I believe they'll be choosing the 144,000 as their leaders in their different localities because uh, um, that's prophetic, basically, and we can be there to restore these things, these truths. We've talked about the covenant now, and the third seal is uh, the... Um, law, uh, and it fits with when Elijah is supposed to restore all things, he comes in Malachi 4, 4, and 5, remember the law of Moses with the statutes and judgments, behold I send you Elijah, and those statutes and judgments have a sevenfold emphasis in Ezekiel 20, verses 11 to 24, it's uh, statutes, judgments, and they're linked to Sabbath, statutes, judgments, Sabbaths, with an S, which is the fourth seal, okay? And it's not Sabbath, seventh day, it is Sabbaths with an S. And uh, I think the enemy of souls uh, is behind the fact that, the, that his church and his people uh, boast that they changed the Sabbath and the Jewish festivals. And they now have uh, All Saints Day, which is Halloween, and Christ Mass, which is a celebration of the dead. Masses are a celebration of the dead, death of the dead. Well, that, that's not good, you know. And uh, Easter... Uh, pagan rites of fertility with uh, eggs and bunny rabbits, uh, not good. Uh, that's pagan. And in Jeremiah 10, it says, learn not the ways of the heathen. Now they have cut a tree down and they deck it with silver and gold and ornaments and so on. Uh, not, not, that's, that's pagan celebrations, he said. Learn not the ways of the heathen. Well, we've, we've learned some of those. Need to get away from it and consider God's holy days which were designated by Moed appointed times. From the very first page of the Bible, Genesis 1.14, Moed is then found also in Leviticus 23, verse 44, where the God's feasts, he says they're my feasts. He didn't say they're Jewish feasts. And they, they are uh, said to be Moed and enforced by statutes forever. Well, did God forget that uh, Christ was going to die? They're going to be nailed to the cross? Or is that just a bad translation maybe? Maybe we take it wrong. The law is nailed to the cross as a means of salvation. We cannot earn our salvation. That's why Christ was worried about the Galatians. They were hair splitters. 
splitting to the minutest detail and arguing over it, losing the spirit of the day. Uh, they should have uh, obeyed what Colossians 2.17 says, except that the translators added the word is and it changed the whole meaning. Okay, they, uh, The idea is uh, don't let anybody judge you for, uh, for these holy days which are shadows of things to come. Are, not were. Okay, If it's were, they were uh, done away with at the cross. But are means still future. They are shadows of things to come. Don't let anybody judge you, but the body of Christ can decide how to keep these. That's how it should read, but the way it does read with the is that they added says don't let anybody judge you. These are shadows. Uh, uh, the body of Christ is the substance. Okay, so If you think you have the substance, you have Christ, that's fine. But really, uh, the, the body of Christ was the church, and they could judge how to keep them. Hope you follow that. I kind of went fast, but anyway. That's a quick view of the uh, statutes and judgments and Sabbaths, which uh, fit Christ's clues, by the way, for when he will return when we should be ready. As the days of Noah, it tells when the flood came, and it had Passover timing, but in the second spring month. And the next little parable is, then shall two be in the field. Then means at the same time, or as a direct co consequence. So same timing as the flood, and uh, then when five women miss the wedding, Christ says, watch, you don't know, you don't understand, because, or for, the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country. That's a provision for Passover again in the second month. In Numbers 9, verse 10 and 11, hello, was Christ trying to get our attention by 9, 11? Numbers 9, verses 10 and 11, okay? Uh, end time stuff, big stuff, maybe like 9, 11, coming on second Passover. And I believe so, you know. God foresaw the future. He knows the end from the beginning. Why not a 9-11 and be ready by watching and praying, as he said. Uh, more on this in the, um, uh, later in some of these videos that we're talking about. Uh, but just want to uh, finish with these. We've covered four seals. The fifth is Christ's name. We did discuss the fact that there was no J in Hebrew or Greek. So how did we get Jesus? From the Society of Jesus. In Italy, they pronounce the Savior's name, Jesus, okay? Well, Christ said, I'm come in my Father's name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you'll receive. If the Father's name was Zeus, then they say it right in Italy. But the, that's a, Zeus was the Greek god of, of, um, god of Greek mythology. The myth means nothing. It isn't, it isn't there. It's not real. And uh, Zeus can't promise us salvation. But when, when Satan comes to impersonate Christ, he'll take that name. Christ said, I'm come in my Father's name, you receive me not. If another come in his own name, Zeus, okay? Or, uh, yea, Zeus, as they say in Italy. Hey, Zeus, as they say in Latin America. That's how they pronounce J-E-S-U-S is hey, Zeus. And we say Jesus, okay? Well, um, Times of ignorance, God winked. We've all had prayers answered by Jesus, okay? Because God is big enough to do that and still get it across to us. But uh, he says times of ignorance, he winks. But in times of judgment, we must repent. Right? Go by the best information we have. And if we don't like that information, I think we're in Second Thessalonians 2, verse 10. Uh, those who receive a strong delusion that they will believe a lie. We have to go with the truth uh, and seek it. Be like the Brians. Receive with readiness and search and see if the scripture supports this. But uh, I, you know, I've been looking at this for uh, 30 years plus since I attended a prophecy conference in Lincoln, Nebraska, and um, I've had plenty of time to decide. I'm not under any pressure, but I'm seeing a, a significance to seven truths with a sevenfold emphasis. Seven times we are told we will be hated for Christ's name. Uh, you'll be hated of all all nations for my name's sake. Some of these modern translations even just eliminate the name right there. They just say, you'll be hated for my sake. Bad idea. Hated for the name, okay? And the name uh, is not, not with a J, okay? The original King James was, uh, in 1611, was spelled with I-E-S-O-U-S, Jesus, which is how they say it in Italy still. Okay, uh, and by the way, it's Yeshua. He had the name of Joshua, and in a linear will show that. If you uh, the same letters that are translated as Joshua in the New Testament in Hebrews 4:8 and Acts 7:45 are translated Jesus everywhere else, and if you have the original King James, you go to those texts. They goofed. Okay, they were just so used to translating those letters as Jesus 
that when they came to where it really meant Joshua in Acts 7.45 and Hebrews 4, they, they wrote Jesus in the King James and then they had to change it in the New King James when they updated it, they put Joshua. Mischief in the translation, hiding the truth, bad idea. I would hate to be a translator in the Day of Judgment. Uh, the sixth seal is uh, about a hiding place. You know, it's uh, the kings of the earth are seeking a place to, uh, to hide, uh, hide us from the face of him that uh, sits on the throne. And who shall be able to stand, it ends up with? Well, those that are sealed in the next chapter. But who shall stand? Where can we hide? Uh, I believe the hiding place for the end time is the land of the covenant, the land that God covenanted with Abraham seven times. He said, I'm going to give you this land. I'm going to give you this land in Genesis 15, verse 17, he said, it's for you and your seed. Well, Paul says, if you're Christ, you're Abraham's seed. So that's our land. Christians can complain, claim that land. And in the end time, God is promising to uh, gather us out of all the other lands and bring us to that land if we're willing. Okay, He's not going to take unwilling people. He wants those that are ready and seeking it. And I don't, I, you know, it says in, and by the way, <laughs> This is supported by Ellen White's last title that she gave her last book. Uh, she titled her book, The Captivity and Restoration of Israel. Um, and the, trans the, the publishers sadly, badly changed her title to Prophets and Kings, which is meaningless. It does not mean what she had. Uh, the, uh, her title comes from Jeremiah 30, verse 3. Lo, the days come, saith the Lord, that I'll bring again the captivity of my people, Israel and Judah, and cause them to return to the land that I gave their fathers, they shall possess it. Verse 11 says, I'm with you to save you, though I make a full end of all other nations. I will not make a full end of you. Well, I don't want to be here when the full end is made. And I believe a full end would be made of me if I stay here. I need to be willing to be gathered. And in the next chapter, we, we read about it. It's the New Covenant chapter. starts out in Jeremiah 31.1 at the same time have to look back at the previous sentence to see that it's latter day you'll consider it at the same time verse 8 I'm going to bring them from the north country which was Babylon gather them from the coast the lame the blind the woman with child a great company will return thither or there verse uh, 16 says I'll, I'll bring you from the land of the enemy and verse 17 says your children will come again to their own border this is not America okay America is uh, over the hill and going down in Daniel uh, 11, verse 40, the king of the north overflows. King of the north is Babylon, okay, uh, in Ezekiel 26, verse 7. And the end time Babylon in Revelation 17, verse 5, is uh, the harlot, Rome, okay. Uh, that's the imagery of Revelation 17. You cannot escape it if you think of church and you see the harlot and what she does, committing fornication with kings, Catholic church involved with politics, uh, Christ said, my kingdom is not of this world. He wasn't trying to get governments to force people to do it right as they're going to try to do. Okay, And there are quotes that I could give, but won't go there right now. So bottom line is that um, we need the new covenant promise or we won't be ready to meet Christ in the sky. Yeah. Uh, we might think we are, but uh, Christ is going to say, uh, many are going to say, Lord, Lord. He's going to say, I don't know you. And the Greek word for no is genosko. It means marital love or covenant love. You know, you may marry people by covenant. At, at Sinai, when Israel made a covenant, God said that you, you'll be my kingdom. And he also later said, I'm married to you. So he regards a covenant as marriage. That's how we, uh, as 144,000 are virgins that get into the wedding, the wise virgins do. And we can, we can do it by making the covenant. So uh, that's uh, the big picture for six seals. And the seventh seal uh, we just uh, uploaded today earlier was uh, this is Friday um, is uh, the the Godhead. Paul says in and by the way Paul was not just some part time theologian. He wrote half the New Testament. He had been a member of the Sanhedrin. He knew theology better than you or I. And he says in Romans one twenty that whatever can be known about God may be understood from the things that are made, even as Godhead. And uh, if there, we can understand the Godhead from the things that are made, and the first page or first chapter of the Bible says, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And so in the day that God made man, he made him in his image, male, uh, male and female. Okay? Well, and, and, that's, and then Genesis 5, verse 1 and 2. Again, it says God made man in his image and in his likeness, male and female. They're 
Five times it says we're made in their image and likeness, and twice it says male and female. We've overlooked the fact that uh, the word for God throughout Genesis, uh, used 48 times roughly throughout the Bible, really, is El Shaddai. And it means the mighty breasted one, okay? Uh, the root word of Shaddai is Shad, it's breast. And uh, Paul said, Jerusalem which above is the mother of us all. Uh, it's, you know, mother, a, a city can't be a mother, it's, it's about her and uh, the Godhead. This is a brief introduction, but from the first page of the Bible where we find Elohim, plural word for God, uh, and that it has male and female components, and I might even add something really <laughs> overlooked, is the fifth commandment. Honor your father and your mother that your days may be long on the land that the Lord your God gives you. And father and mother, they were, they were the, at, at the time that God gave that commandment, they were on the way to the promised land. And, uh, and it's father and mother, heavenly father, heavenly mother that's giving it. They, that's the only way we can have a long time on the land. We might, uh, their, their father and mother, Israelites' parents, sometimes sacrificed them to idols and the land spewed them out. It wasn't what the father they wanted, it was what the Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother wanted. God, Christ taught us to pray our Heavenly Father, and uh, I think we should read between the lines and the rest of Scripture to get the full picture and honor them. So uh, thank you very much for considering this. Uh, I'd like to encourage you to uh, tune in. Uh, there will be a, a um, free conference call on Sabbath afternoon so that you can listen uh, if you have questions. 2 o'clock uh, Central Time, 3 o'clock Eastern, and two hours later then would be 3 o'clock Mountain and 2 o'clock Pacific Time. If you have questions, let's talk about it, and uh, the link will be in the below this uh, video. Thank you for considering. If you like it, please indicate it so, and uh, God bless you. See you at the top.